What is Wonder Woman's wrist armor made out of? Let's throw down the gauntlet. Science behind Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman comes out today, and I think we can all appreciate how long a time coming this movie is for a lot of comic book fans. It's taken a long time for Wonder Woman to get her first movie, and now that it's finally here, you guys know I had to do a video on it. There's a lot of cool aspects about Wonder Woman that we could talk about, but the thing I want to focus on actually relates to these two really cool shots we see in the movie. In both of the shots, we can see Wonder Woman using her famous gauntlets to block attacks from both natural and supernatural enemies. Today, we're going to break down the science behind this and how it's possible in the real world. To figure out how to build these puppies, we need to cover what they do first. Going by the shots in the trailer, we know that Wonder Woman's gauntlets are capable of blocking bullets right to the point that they break on impact and absorbing lightning. So the gauntlets are super bulletproof. But how do we get that to work? Well, we need to take a quick history lesson first. Wonder Woman's main plot takes place during World War II. This era will give us some insight as to what kind of bullet is being used to shoot her gauntlets in this scene. Knowing the time period and even just examining the gun that shoots at her, I think it can safely be said that this gun appears to be an M1 Garand a rifle common with US troops during World War II. The power of a gun is measured in a unit called calibers, which refers to the inner diameter of the barrel of a given firearm. The higher the caliber, the more effective the bullet. M1 Garands in specific are 30 caliber guns, making them fairly powerful, which is why they are so popular during World War II. So, we know that the gauntlets can hold their own against 30 caliber bullets, and then some. What about their ability to absorb electricity? Well, since the gauntlets are obviously metal, I think it's also safe to say that these gauntlets are electrical conductors. Electrical conduction is when electricity hits a certain kind of material that allows the electricity to pass through it, allowing for access to the ground, or at least closer to it, without harming the material. If this is the case, this material is called a conductor, and is conductive. There are many conductors out there, each with varying degrees of conductivity. However, it isn't the same as absorbing. If Wonder Woman's gauntlets do conduct electricity, that electricity will still need a way out of the gauntlets. To fix this problem, one would probably need a rubber underside to the armor, and some kind of wire that would allow for the conductors in the gauntlets to reach the conductors in the leg and foot armor, which would then allow for the electricity to enter the ground, leaving the person wearing the armor unharmed by it. So, we know that Wonder Woman's gauntlets are bulletproof and conductive. So, the big question. What metals are used in making them? There are a few combinations that could be used here, and I say combinations because two different metals would be needed, but the candidates I chose were titanium and copper. Titanium is resistant to 50 caliber firearm bullets. If it can block that, it can fairly easily block 30 caliber bullets. So most of the metal on the gauntlets would be titanium, because since blocking bullets requires pretty good accuracy, a wider surface area of titanium would make the job easier for the wearer. However, titanium is a really, really bad conductor. This is where copper, our second metal, steps in. Copper is an almost perfect electrical conductor, and combined with the aforementioned rubber's underside and connecting wires, it would be able to conduct electricity and rid the wearer of it pretty darn easily. In short, the gray strip that we see here can be titanium, while the W ends here can easily be made of copper. And that's just one of the many ways Wonder Woman's gauntlets can be created. Of course, her being fictional, there are a few more things a suit of armor like hers would need, but it is totally within the realm of possibility. Wonder Woman still has that great, fantastical, mythological feel to her, but her armor might not have such a sense of wonderment around it after all. Hey guys, hope you all enjoyed the episode of Science Behind Superheroes. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like and leave a comment as to what superhero or supervillain you guys want to see me do next. Uh, my, my next video will actually be a Wonder Woman review, hopefully. Uh, that might be a little bit late, depending on when I go see it. I haven't actually seen it yet. Uh, it is coming out the day that I'm recording this, though, and hopefully this is the same day that I'm uploading it, which would be a Friday. But um, this is a much shorter one, I found, and that's because uh, I do like the idea of these Wonder Woman gauntlets, and I like the fact that they are very much within the realm of possibility. And I think that's why this video is short, is because a lot of my other stuff uh, tends to be more theoretical, even though a lot of it does have evidence to back it up. 
Um, but it is theoretical, and so therefore it can take longer to explain, or it can have more aspects that kind of play into it. Uh, but this one is more fairly straightforward, I feel, and I think that it's a really cool idea, um, despite the fact that it's a short video, and despite the fact that it's a really a, almost a fairly simple concept. But um, yeah, guys, that's kind of like my little talk to you for today. Hope you guys have a good week. Hope you guys enjoy watching Wonder Woman. I'm going to go see it soon myself. I'll let you guys know what I think in my review. Have a good week.